How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Well, it's Thursday here on this program, and we got a lot to talk about today. I like the fact that I'm not wearing a hat. I know that's one of the biggest stories every day, what I got on my head. But seriously, we got news. Not the least of which is that AEW Dynamite show last night. That was a weird show, dude. That was a weird show. Wrestling-wise, I mean, there was some good wrestling on the show because you got a very, very talented roster, and it's pretty damn hard to not have a good wrestling show. The main event with Kyle O'Reilly and and John Moxley was a great match and a lot of good stuff on the show. And then there was the booking. There was some weird stuff on this show. And another new championship belt in AEW and I talked about this a while ago and a lot of people there have mentioned it that uh you know their feeling on on Tony Khan as a as a boss and a booker is that uh you know personally they feel that he's a really nice guy but uh by being a really nice guy he runs into the problem of wanting to make everybody happy which of course you can't you cannot make everybody happy but if you look at the roster, and you look at all of the guys there, and uh, women as well, but mostly men, because there's a lot of dudes on this roster. I mean, it seems very clear to me that he just wants to make some more people happy. So we've got a new belt with a weird name. And we'll tell you about that here on the show today. Plus all of the other news coming out of Dynamite leading to the Forbidden Door show. we got NXT ratings. We've got... Notes on a number of different individuals. Roosh! Davey Boy Smith Jr. did a wacky interview. And uh, plenty more. We'll take your feedback today. I'm sure there'll be a lot. 425-780-7566. Back in a moment with Mike Sempervivi and more Observer Live. Here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Well, Mike, yesterday you didn't get to say a lot. And may as well just keep that ball rolling quickly here. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through this Dynamite report quickly. Because then we'll have 40 minutes to spend on the details of this. So here's what happened very quickly. They had the Battle Royal. It was a casino Battle Royal. The winner goes to the main event to face John Moxley. These are the people that were in the Battle Royal. Eddie Kingston, Darby Allen, Daniel Garcia, Lance Archer, Tony Nese, Ricky Starks, Jake Hager, Ray Phoenix, Swerve Strickland, Keith Lee, John Silver, Takeshita, Max Caster, Colton and Austin Gunn, Powerhouse Hobbs, Bobby Fish, Kyle O'Reilly, Dante Martin, Wheeler Yuta, and the Joker was Andrade. Now, later we can go through why is this person, why wasn't this person, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, yesterday I, I uh, was talking to Dave and I said, how about even the Young Bucks? And he said, well, you know, the Young Bucks, they're, you know, for sure a team. <laughs> Just like Colton and, and Austin Gunn. But, I mean, can anybody tell me the last time that Jake Hager had a singles match in AEW? I can't think of any ever. But anyway, he's in line for the belt. It was won by Kyle O'Reilly. He last eliminated Wheeler Yuta. And so he went on to the main event with John Moxley. They don't see him. Punk had lower leg surgery and that it was a success. But nobody will say what he broke, except apparently Max Caster, who in his rap said that he had broken his foot. But I guess we'll have to find out eventually. Then, in what was like a parody, but it was actually real, they announced, we've got a new singles title in AEW. We're calling it the All-Atlantic Championship. We're going to do a tournament, which is actually just four matches, and the winners go to a four-way at Forbidden Door. Buddy Matthews versus Pac, Ethan Page versus Miro, Penta versus Malachi Black, and a exclusive match featuring New Japan talent, a company that is nowhere near the Atlantic. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Pac beat Buddy Matthews. Match was great. Hey, you ain't getting bad wrestling on Dynamite for the most part. So uh, Pac has moved on in the All-Atlantic 
title tournament. We had Trent Barrett in the ring. He wants a rematch with FTR since they never actually lost. It was a DQ and the great Okan and the New Japan blokes ran in. FTR says, dude, we'll give you a shot, but like you should be mad at those guys. And who should make their AEW Dynamite debut? But Will Ospreay, Aaron Hanare, and Aussie Open. And uh, they beat down the AEW guys, left them for dead. This is leading to a six-man on Rampage. And uh, I know that Dave went over the Rampage spoilers on the Observer Radio Show last night. But uh, I think I may have fallen asleep. I have no idea what happens on Rampage, so it's not a spoiler. But uh, Will Ospreay's crew wrestles on Rampage, and I heard it was awesome. We'll do the lineup here with Fauntleroy later. Hangman Page beat David Finley. And then afterwards, Hangman Page cut a promo, and he said, there's a lot I'd like to say about CM Punk, but I'm not going to say it tonight. And judging from the fact that I wasn't in the Battle Royal, it looks like I'm not getting a rematch for the AEW Championship anytime soon. So therefore, he says, I want a shot at the New Japan IWGP Championship. I want Okada at Forbidden Door. And then Adam Cole on commentary says that he wants Okada at Forbidden Door. And so I don't know if they're doing a three-way or what they're doing uh, but for sure, Adam Page, the hangman, will be facing Okada, and perhaps Adam Cole as well, at the Forbidden Door show. We had a Thunder Rose Open challenge that was accepted by Marina Shafir. Wardlow did an interview, and Wardlow came out and said, I asked not to be in this battle royal, because our champion is CM Punk. And if I can't beat him, well, I just don't want this belt yet. But I'll tell you what I do want, he says. I want that TNT title. And so Scorpio Sky is going to give him the shot, but Ethan Page and Dan Lambert take him away because he's got an injured leg. And so Smart Mark then appears on the big screen. And Wardlow's next challenge, everybody, he has two choices. He can go to court or he can face 20 security members in an elimination match. I'm hoping he goes to court, just because I think that'd be a interesting segment, but it looks like he's going to do the match. Young Bucks promo. They want a shot at the tag team titles. The Hardys show up and say, brothers, we beat you. And so Christian, Jungle Boy, and Luchasaurus show up. And without clearing it with either of them, Christian announces it'll be a three-way ladder match, including Jeff Hardy, on the show next week. And Jungle Boy is like, what? It's coming, everybody. And you know what? It's about time. Thunder Rosa faced Marina Shafir. This was not a very good match. And you know, uh, I think it was uh, DJ in his uh, preview noted that, like, everyone complains about everything. Like, you know, everybody complained that Thunder Rosa can't get on the show. Then they complained that she is on the show with Marina Shafir. Well, DJ, you're right. But you know what? There's a solution to this problem. And that is, put her on the show, not against Marina Shafir. Match was not good. Thunder Rosa won. And then Marina attacks her afterwards. And uh, out comes Tony Storm to make the save. And it looks like they're going to go Tony Storm versus Thunder Rosa for the women's title. Uh, Dynamite next week, uh, we have got Chris Jericho Ortiz, hair versus hair, which not a peep about that match on the show. Not a peep. Not even a video package. We've got Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus versus Young Bucks and the Hardys. 20 on 1, Wardlow versus, as it says here on our front page report, the plaintiffs. And then uh, Ethan Page faces Miro in an All-Atlantic Championship qualifier. This led to the main event with William Regal on commentary, John Moxley, Kyle O'Reilly. Brother, this match was great. They beat on each other. They tried to submit each other. They tried to pummel each other. John Moxley debuted a new move that I've never seen, and I didn't even know if you could actually do it, but he pulled it off. A Darst choke into a superplex off the top. 
And then finally, uh, this was a New Japan finish if I ever saw one. There was no question who the better man was. John Moxley puts him in a sleeper, puts him in the bulldog choke, hits him with the regal knee, hits him with a paradigm shift, drops him on his head, pins him. John Moxley will be going to Forbidden Door against a winner of Tanahashi versus Goto, which, God help me, it better be Tanahashi. And that is your dynamite report. Any quick thoughts, Mike? What do you? I'll, 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 start, I'll just do this. Mm-hmm. When we come back, we're gonna have to talk about some certain details. What do you want to talk about when we come back from the break? Oh, I don't know, boss. Where where would you like to begin? Would you like to begin at the beginning with the battle royal? Up maybe? to you, and dude. You pick. Let's let's start with that. We might as well start right off the top with that, and then we can move on from there for whatever actually catches our ire that we thought about the show. All these nits we're going to pick that will be called old and out of touch about. Hey, listen. This I would not call this a bad show. It was not. But there was some definite I don't questionable know, things. Yeah, I mean, th- some of the booking on this show blew my mind. Which fair to question, too, and it's not and like you know we're what beating I liked? AEW into the ground. It's much like WWE. Point out the things that didn't make much sense. I liked I liked the fact that I got to hear from the stand up for AEW blokes. Ah, uh, yeah. Cuz man, some of them got to work themselves into some circles over this one. Mm-mm-mm. But yes, we will talk about the Battle Royal when we get back. I think the biggest things to discuss on the show are the Battle Royal, this new belt, and really everything else on the show was either a tie-in to the new belt or the Battle Royal. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Well, what do you think of that Battle Royal? <laughs> what do you think of these blokes? You know, I was wondering why they were going to have a battle royal as opposed to a 8 or a 12 or a 16 person tournament and I guess I found out the answer last night because they're already doing a tournament. They already had planned for this All-American title or All-Atlantic title, but I guess we'll get to that later. I uh, I was hoping yesterday it was going to be nothing but top stars and they didn't end up being the case and I guess with the Casino Battle Royal it doesn't lend itself to that, but it felt like just another battle royal, and I guess what else is it supposed to feel like? But it's like, this is supposed to be for the world title, and they've done a very good job putting their world championship on a pedestal, you know, chasing the IWGP title lineage and trying to make it as important as other titles out there. So, I, you know, I thought it was a cheap way to go with a battle royal and the fact that they had just so many random guys, and they didn't do a very good job explaining why there weren't other guys involved in this who people wanted to see like Wardlow in a way I get it I actually like that one because he's got a history with CM Punk it was you know the the whole steps with him turning on MJF and giving Punk the diamond ring like I can see why he said that him fine no problem perfect but do that maybe before the Battle Royal. You know, I don't know why they wanted to start the show with it either. You know, maybe they could have moved it to later. So we had explanations as to why guys who were already entered maybe in the All-Atlantic, that's why they're not in the Battle Royal. That's why these top guys who you want to see aren't in there. And why Adam Page, I mean... <laughs> The Hangman Page thing really made me laugh because it's like all he's got to do is say, you know what, they put me in the Battle Royal. And I said, you know what, I appreciate you doing that. But at some point, I want a one-on-one match with CM Punk. I want a rematch that I'm due. And instead of getting involved in this, I know what I really want right now. I know what's going to make me better right now. And it's going to be facing off against Okada and taking the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. That probably would have come out a lot better than what he did, which was ultimately get himself you know, or the company booed as to why he wasn't in the match. So battle royals are battle royals. They are what they are. And I see you just losing it over there right now. So I'll, I'll stop talking about it. But there are worse things in the world. You know, life is going to go on. It's not anything that you're going to have to beat on later on. But it was a, to me, a lot of questionable choices around that battle royal. I actually wasn't losing it, but I do want to make a comment about the... uh, You know what's funny is the Battle Royal and this new belt all tie together. Yes. Because actually all the belts tie together. So here's the deal. When this thing, when this AEW first started, 
I think Tony's idea and, you know, people that were, like, giving him suggestions, they all had the same idea, which was, don't have too many belts. Let's make the belts important. Let's have a world title. Let's have a tag team title, women's title. And then, you know, eventually it was like more and more belts start showing up. Then we have an FTR title. Then we've got a TNT title. Now we've got the All-Atlantic title. We're going to have six-man titles. And it's just, it's so many belts. And I want to bring up something about these belts because remember how Wardlow was like, uh, I don't want, I don't want this interim world championship. I want the TNT title. And then, you know, people are like, well, you know, these, these guys, maybe they want to win, become the first all whatever title. Is it all Atlantic? God, this could drive me crazy. (laughs) I want that, you know, so I'll, I'll, you know, bow out of the, here's the thing. They always talk about how we don't want our secondary title to be like a mid card belt. Right? We want it to be on par with the world title. That's like the idea that we always hear. Bro, that never, ever happens. And if it did happen, what it would do is water down your world title. People always, always go back to the Intercontinental title. They glorify the Intercontinental title. Oh, man, you know, Mr. Perfect and Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels and blah, 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 blah. Bro, the Intercontinental title was never on par with the WWF title, ever. It was never pushed that way. It never was. What it was, was a belt that if you were a hardcore fan, and for almost a full two-year period, the world title was on Ultimate Warrior, Sergeant Slaughter, Hulk Hogan, The Undertaker, and Hulk Hogan. Well, yeah, you had another belt that was defended in awesome matches, by Mr. Perfect and Shawn Michaels. But so as a fan, you might have preferred that title, but there was never a period where the Intercontinental title was on par with the WWF title. Never. Not one time ever. Can I throw one asterisk yes. at you for that? Yes. Don Morocco's feud with Superfly Snuka towards the end where people were tiring about it. And it's not, I'm not saying that overall for business that it was bigger, but for in that moment in time, you could argue that it was, it was bigger because Superfly Snuka was far more popular than Backlund was. And what he had going on with Morocco was ridiculous. Maybe for a very short for, period and of for time. For that feud, that would have, and, that would probably be it. And here's the thing. And too. Well, hold on. There were Go points ahead. where the Intercontinental title was prestigious. Absolutely. WrestleMania three, yes. oh, you, the feud you mentioned, and and yeah, it was that SummerSlam. Yeah. There were times, and you know when Rock was feuding with Triple H, everything like that. There yeah. were times when it was prestigious, but it was never on par with the WWF title. No. So my point is, I watched this show, and you know Hangman, he he can't even get into the Battle Royal for the championship match. And then Wardlow doesn't want it. And then I guess in theory, you know, there's eight guys who would rather fight for the the all-Asian title or whatever it's called. God, this could drive me nuts. So it's, but it, and then, you know, okay, so we have a prestigious title, which is the AEW title. But like, you know, Jericho doesn't want to be in the Battle Royal, apparently. And, uh, you know, the Young Bucks can't get in there. And uh, Hangman can't get in. And Wardlow doesn't want in. But like Hager's in and and uh, the ass boys, <laughs> the ass boys are with a there. full and with a full acclaimed entrance too, which was like ridiculous too. Is all that's going on? The best idea anybody actually had was forget this battle royal. What you should have done was take the three available former champions, Chris Jericho, John Moxley, and Hangman Page, and they have a three way, and the winner, fine. You know, yeah. that's something where it's like, you know, these are the most three prestigious guys that we've got right now because they're the three available former non-injured well, what's champions. What's the point of having a top 10 if you're not going to then do that and then take five other guys, have a mini tournament or have a shootout for that night or do something? I, I, I Yeah, I just the battle royal idea was, again, and maybe the idea of not having a tournament was because you have this all-Atlantic one going on and... I agree, and I I was a fan at the same era Tony Khan was. I remember reading Inside Wrestling and the Roll Call of Champions, and on TBS on a Saturday night, you could see the Central States Champion and the Florida Champion and the National Tag Team. There's all these belts, 
And I loved a lot of those belts, and I loved how they looked, and obviously he cared about how belts look because he models the new belts after the older ones, the old North American heavyweight title. That's what Thunder Rose's belt looks like, and on and on and everything. But the reality is, is even though you may start these things with really noble intentions, like you really have a good idea where, you know what? When this isn't happening on a show, you have Pac and Miro going at it over the All-Atlantic. Sounds great. This can be the title that gets defended when somebody goes to New Japan. Imagine Wheeler Yuta with this when he was in the, the Super Juniors, you know, facing off against, you know, uh, the, you know the, whoever. But it never ends up turning out that way. And unfortunately, too, there's too many right now. The TNT title on Scorpio Sky... I think this feud with Wardlow, I think it's going to be good. I think to get that belt on Wardlow, I think it would be a great thing. But, like, there's, it, it's just too busy. And it makes also when these other belts come in from outside, AAA, New Japan, Rev Pro, if they start working with them, wherever, it dampens the effectiveness of those belts on top of the fact you have the ROH belt still. And I think they've killed the pure, the women's, and the six-man titles there. But then you're also talking about adding a trios title, which is almost inevitable for AEW, a promotion that was set up on three-person units. So it's it's very busy. I don't understand the logic. I, I don't know if Tony Khan's been on Busted Open, if he's done his press junkets, if he's talked to Dave. I'd love to know why and why now to have this belt. Well, the last thing I will say, and then we'll move on, is that some people are going to claim, oh, nitpicking, nitpicking, nitpicking. But it's listen, fair. it's all fair. Listen, at the end of the day, especially after that MJF thing, Hangman does not need to come out. And it, I know he didn't say that I'm being held down, but the way he talked about it and the fact that the audience booed. They were dissing him. I mean, you don't, look, need, you don't Brian, need that right now. You and, don't need Wardlow saying, I don't want to fight for the AW world. I disagree. You don't there. need any of that. I, I disagree. I there. appreciate that they gave him an excuse to not want it. But come on, you're choosing I, the TNT title over the AEW title. Well, again, I disagree there because there's reasons he stated, you know, and you could have gotten more into because of CM Punk and that whole dynamic and the fact MJF. But again, forget about him for a second. When it comes to Hangman Page, all he had to do was say, I'm, I'm focused on Okada. I'm getting my, my man back against Okada. I, I'm, I'm CM Punk. I'm going to get that rematch. Whether you have the title or not, I am going to beat you. But I'm going to get my title back. But first, I'm going to take Okada's. And, and that's all he really had to say as opposed to doing the sad thing. And look, if they have a long-term plan where Omega and him and the Bucks all – you know, if it, imagine Omega coming back to boost Hangman spirits later on down the line, it's possible. This is not a, a seed I want to plant now at, at this particular time. I got a moment, Observer Live. I got to say one more thing about Wardlow here, since seeing a lot of people saying, I actually liked Wardlow's. I actually thought, all right, here's the problem, okay? So Wardlow said, I ask not to be in the Battle Royal because if I'm going to win this title, I want to win it from CM Punk. He is our champion. That's what he said, right? Mm hmm Okay. Well, brother, if you want to win the title from CM Punk, there's literally one way to guarantee that you're going to get a championship match with CM Punk, and that's to become the interim champion. Hey, look. If because this is the like interim champion will defend against CM Punk in a unification match. It's like real athletics. There's always somebody complaining about an interim champion. Wardlow just happened to be that guy. And again, look, they could have added a little bit extra onto it, in my opinion, you know, to, to make it, you know, hit home a little more as to why he's doing it and not make the company just blow it. You know, because again, everything, there was a lot of blowing it off last night with Hangman Page, with Wardlow, with the Battle Royal in general, with some of the people that they had in it. So... Again, you know, at the end of the day, this is probably going to end up with Tanahashi and Moxley, as it should. So, you know, at that point, everybody will forget about this. Now, let me back up just a little bit to say that one bloke here on our chat. I was going to say, are we getting roasted? I don't have any of that. No, nah, not really. But he said, uh, what did he say here? So it sounds to me like Tony Khan can't book. I think that's what he said. Anyway, what? listen, everybody. Tony Khan, here's here's what's what's interesting. Tony Khan actually is a great booker. 
But well, when you when you great, do when you largely do great. a great job, uh, l- let me continue. Okay. When you largely do a great job and everything makes sense and you you do good builds to this and that, then it actually sticks out when something isn't good. It's not like when you watch like Raw and it's like, you know, I can literally bury everything in every single solitary segment. <laughs> and it's just like white noise. It's in one ear and out another. When you largely do a great job, then, yeah, when you see something completely nonsensical, like a battle royal where the biggest stars aren't in there and total dorks are in there. And like, you know, Nick Jack- Nick Jackson has had way more singles matches than Jake Hager. <laughs> I mean, come on. You notice things more. Which is exactly what happened here. Got a lot of feedback. Should we read some of the feedback? Yeah, sure. All right. I will say that I'm not going to uh, talk about anything they did on the NXT spoilers with Cameron Grimes because I haven't seen it yet, okay? I've had a lot of people emailing me about some angle they did with Cameron Grimes. Once I see it, I'll talk about it. Maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. We'll see. This person here says, well, I do think AEW has felt a bit bloated with too much going on at times in recent weeks. It's still consistently the best product in pro wrestling right now. I think a lot of people go out of their way to constantly hyper-criticize it. And it's not hyper-criticizing. No. no. Two things can be true, okay? I think the recent issue can be traced to them being thrown a massive curveball with the CM Punk injury as well as the... Bro, the MJF stuff is not a curveball, okay? It's not. I've been telling you that literally since the day after he wasn't at that uh, at Come that on, meet and people. greet. Now the CM Punk thing is absolutely one hundred percent a curveball, and uh, and when you have a curveball, you've got to figure out some solution to this problem. And uh, he did not find the ideal solution to this problem at all. No, and that's what happens when you uh, you know. You book months and months in advance, and everything is very intricate, and then your world champion goes down. Yeah, you're struggling to figure out what to do now. This person says it may be a step down for Wardlow, but that 20-on-1 handicap match is going to be a lot of fun, and at least (laughs) it'll be over quick. That's not a step down if done right. It's a celebration that everybody's going to remember of chaos and carnage. That's what... And I'm good with that. Look... Wardlow's in that funny position that when he wrestles, the longer the match goes on, again, depending on who it's with, but for the most part, it's tough. Nobody wants to see him wrestle, and nobody wants to see him wrestle in long matches. They only want to see him against stars, and he can't really do that. So what do you do? You throw these types of slights a hand in, and this is where pro wrestling is better than real sports because you can have a situation where Wardlow every once in a while kills 20 men for that week and then he has a match the next week and then you kind of go on from there it's perfect first year says please note that the first participant to come out and compete in the all-atlantic championship tournament was buddy matthews representing australia yes that is not the atlantic you're it correct is not it is not it's listen everybody ultimately it's not a big deal what the belt's called but it is really weird. Why is it the All Atlantic title? Why do you call it the All Oceans? Seriously. I mean, you could. Oceanic title? Yeah, um, well, that's maybe it's making that a little too regional or something. I'm just, I don't know. I'm oceanic is like All Oceans. All Oceans title. Know. The All Oceans All title. Continents yeah. title. That was my Baltimore almost came out there. The All Oceans. That's terrible. I guess you probably yeah. can't say Intercontinental. Although it's, no, not like it, it's not like it's trademarked. I mean, New Japan has an intercontinental title. And that's a great name, although I can see why AEW didn't want to use it. That's what, like, if you think about it, because everybody had a national title or a United States title at the time, North American title. When they came up with that, the intercontinental title of all the WWF speak we've made fun of over the years, that's a pretty damn good one. I like that one. What did they call the intercontinental title? Was it the national title? The North American title. North American title, yeah. yeah. Can't really do that one. How about... Uh, uh, the international title. The Pangea the title. The P- <laughs> we're really going back in time. It really. And we're going to... Yeah, they, they, we're going to uh, uh, honor the, the, the history of the world. men grappling with the Pangea title. <laughs> Called the Olympic title. Well, no, you get sued. Can't do that. That's why it wasn't the Olympic slam anymore, so... Uh, Brian, if you have time, can you and Mike talk more in depth about the situation between Noah and Dragon? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. 
story's weird. So uh, I'll just put it this way. Take it with a grain of salt. Back to the well with another tournament. I grew up on WCW, so I wouldn't mind having so many belts if they didn't. All, they don't all look the same. They definitely don't. That's one well. thing I can I can say. They don't all look the same. No. The TNT title can't even look the same for like two weeks. <laughs> you know how many versions of the TNT title we've seen? Like 15. But someone else actually, they did. They, they said, well, we had the TNT title. And then for the women, it was the TBS title. Yes. So maybe the idea is that the men have the All-Atlantic title, and the women are going to get the All-Pacific title. Why couldn't it be the Discovery title? How about the All-Indian title for the Indian well, Ocean? Well, then, but then, well, are you going you gonna to be touring India? Are you going to be putting it on the big man there? What's his well, name? Well, I mean, Satam we have people Singh? from the Pacific challenging for the All-Atlantic title, so it clearly doesn't matter. Well, and what's, you know, look at it pandering to China. I mean, is OWE still a thing? I thought they were out of business or whatever. Like, I mean, come on. You got you get bringing in any Chinese wrestlers? You going to be talking about a new TV deal in, in China there? Why is China on that belt? Well, because it's, it's an international title that for some reason is not called the international title. Why not it's Germany? It's called the All-Atlantic title. Why not Russia? Nothing matters. Put Russia on there. No, but you put China on there. Why not Brazil? Oh, this guy's got an idea. Why not call it the tall Atlantic title? You must be 6'5 and above to qualify. Hey, listen, I had this it's idea on Observer. Some people in AEW, wouldn't it? I had this idea on uh, Observer Radio, and Dave actually liked it. And that okay. is that we have yet another new belt, but you differentiate it. Like how uh, ROH did the uh, pure title, and uh, and Stardom does the high speed title. It'd be like you know you can't really call it the high speed title, but uh, I don't know if you want to call it the kind of like what the X division was supposed to be, but then they it was just like yeah. whatever after a while. But like this is the belt where it's going to feature guys like Pac, and it's going to and Nick Jackson and uh, Dante Martin. And only guys that are going to do absolutely crazy, fast, insane, eight-minute, boom, 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 spot fest matches. Who can be bigger, like Buddy and Whatever, and you know, yeah. and just, it, it, you know, you'll know that every time there's going to be one of these matches, it's going to be out of this world insane. And uh, it's, it's, you know, that's it. Just whatever. Like the old X Division title. Well, and it's rooted in tradition because when the X Division title was really good and it wasn't Carl Olet as X, you know, and they actually cared about it, it was good. The Cruiserweight title, great, you know, example of that's what you kind of want to shoot for. You know, obviously you can use bigger guys in this era that we talked about, like your Andrade's, who's huge right now when he came out as a joker. But, you know, when Malenko and Ultimo Dragon and Guerrero and Jericho and when the, the storylines, they had some and they treated them seriously. Because that's really the bottom line, too, when it comes to belts and it comes to feuds and everything anyway. Coherent, good storytelling and making people care. And WWF, WWE always went out of the way to make people not care about tag teams, make people not care about lighter heavyweights. They're jokes, they're this, they're that, and they could never... You know, except for what Matt Hardy and, and Rey Mysterio and Mysterio won the title in San Diego. I mean, they never did everything with that cruiserweight title. But to have that kind of mindset for today's time to put in a new belt, yeah, I mean, that probably calling it I don't know what you could call it that would be cooler than high speed title and not to rip start them off completely, but to have a title with that kind of mindset, not the worst idea. Spurgeon says I did like Christian pointing out that Jungle Boy got beat in front of his family in his hometown. Well, the third is coming you know, for sure. Because you've been calling that just because you have said this, I it's can imagine obvious. when it happens, it's when it obvious. happens, you're going to be like, I told you, I called it. I did it. You've tell been you it's it. going to happen. I've been calling it for two years. It doesn't really mean Brother, you called it. Dude, listen, <laughs> you didn't know that Julia Hart was going to join. I mean, come on. Everybody knew. Dude, that. but from day one, from before, like, as soon as it you wasn't were Christian from day signed, one. as soon as you saw Christian and Jungle Boy, you're like, Christian's turning on Jungle no, Boy. No, it, it was from the moment. It was from the <laughs> moment that they got hooked up and I figured it out. Yes, well, you figured it out. It was just pro wrestling. It's illogical that it would go that way. Oh, now for you're going to talk guy? about how pro wrestling is always yes, logical? Yes, the young you talk guy about to Edge? beat the veteran? For, for, well, he doesn't like spooky time. I'm voting him into the Hall of Fame for that. Should. Should be in that Hall of Fame. 
like Magnificent Morocco. It's another guy. Don Morocco should be in your uh, in your Hall of Fame. Should be. You mean the Hall of Awesome? Hall of Awesome. They're two yeah. very different things. You well, don't need to. Awesome. You don't need to have fame to be in the Hall of Awesome. That's the, this is this is true. You voted. <laughs> Brandon Cutler's and who did you vote in recently? Well, the Young with, Bucks with honors and Brandon Cutler. It must have been Brandon Cutler. That was the one with Brandon honors Cutler and, and the Bucks went in as a unit, and then I inducted them separately. <laughs> This person here says, do you think the All-Atlantic belt is a title that AW can give to New Japan? Bro, I've had, I've had people keep saying this. They're going to give this belt to New Japan. Why would you name it the All-Atlantic title and give it to a company based in the Pacific? That doesn't make any sense. They're going to run the Maritimes with it. I'd have been fine with a Maritimes title. <laughs> The tradition of Buddy Wayne up there with, with Masahiro Chono. Yes, and then Nick boy. Wayne could come in when he's 18 and win it. Happy birthday, by the way. He just turned 17 or he something. Did? Did he did? not? Yeah, oh, I believe man. so. Oh, yeah, man. He's too old now. <laughs> Good thing he signed with AEW. Ain't going to get a look That's, from WWE. Well, you know, is he? <laughs> never mind. Maybe, maybe he can be the next one to join Chase U just to drive you completely insane. Imagine him doing that. I, I hope it never happens. Ever. Ever. Do you think Tony Khan is trying to use the old New Japan philosophy when they had the Intercontinental title plus the U.S. and the Openweight title? Brother, he's, he's been past things. that for a long time, dude. See, yeah. It's, you know what I too did? too many belts, too, by the way. I got to say what did irritate me was, you know, there are the people on Twitter that were really angry about it. And so they decided to mock AEW by putting all of the list and how there's too many belts. And they added, like, the Owen Hart belts, and it's like, dude, those aren't belts to be defended. They were just really? trophies given. Like, now, I, there's, there's, you can easily make a list and show there's too many titles, but you don't have to fudge your list. No. Now, should they be carrying them around every week? Well, it's, probably it's, not. But probably not. He but. can't wrestle, so. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Well, Corey here says the All-Atlantic belt will soon be joined by the partial Pacific and the mostly Mediterranean titles. <laughs> Person says, Hangman has started drinking again. I'm very worried for him. <laughs> no. Has yeah. he really? Is yeah. this on his Twitter or something? Yeah. <laughs> God. Uh, now he's in his feelings. Because, And by the way, that all worked really well leading into this title right now, didn't it? WWE put their two top titles on a dude that immediately took him off TV and gave him zero title defenses. Keep in mind, Roman Reigns is not injured. At least their direct competition is trying to have a world champion that's consistently on TV when the original title holder had to step down. Well, yes, these are two completely different issues here. That's, yeah. Why you would unify the titles and then Roman Reigns is no longer on any shows or pay-per-views? <laughs> it's one thing if he's like not even not on TV, but at least he's doing pay-per-views. He's, he's not on any pay-per-views. Maybe they did not expect him to go, hey, I'm going on vacation. And by the way, you know this contract I renegotiated? We're going to kick it in right now. So... All right, everybody. We're going to wrap it up for today. But, hey, if you want a full, detailed recap of AEW and NXT 2.0 tonight on the Brian and Vinny Show, 9 Pacific, midnight Eastern with myself and Vinny. We'll go over all the details. It'll be a fun time. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow here with old Sempy, who at least got a chance to talk today. And, uh, and all of you as well. We'll also have a special guest tomorrow, by the way. Who? I'm not going to tell you yet, but I'm going to give you a hint. We'll see if everyone can figure it out. His dad beat my ass, and it's not Nick Wayne. More tomorrow, everybody. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you again after a while.